Just like I always say, it's not the size of the card that matters, it's how well it can render the ocean. Today's video is brought to you by Thermaltake and the Tower 500. Turn heads with the distinct vertical chassis design of the Tower 500. The wide open interior means unparalleled versatility for your dream build. With support for EATX, CEB, or even EEB motherboards, and space for more fans and cooling options than you can possibly comprehend, you can not only make your build look incredible, but keep it cool too. And thanks to three tempered glass side panels, you can enjoy panoramic views of your PC's inner workings. How's your build in luxury with the Thermaltake Tech Tower 500? Click the link down in the video description to learn more. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Now, I reviewed a number of graphics cards in my time. Everything from $8,000 Enterprise Monsters and dual GPU behemoths to cards as small as this. And this one is definitely a little bit different. On the table in front of me is one of the smallest cards that NVIDIA has ever produced, but don't let its small size fool you. This is the Tesla P4, and under its unassuming shroud lies a full-fat GP104 GPU die with 2560 CUDA cores and 8GB of GDDR5 memory. In fact, this is the same exact Pascal GPU and memory combo found in the Quadro P5000 or in the GTX 1080, albeit in a much smaller form factor. Now obviously, some compromises were made to fit the same silicon from those flagship cards into a half-height passive card. First off, the card is limited to just 75 watts of power, down from the typical 180 to 200 watts you can find in a GTX 1080. The clock speed has also been tuned down to 1113 megahertz from the 1733 megahertz boost on its bigger brothers. Like all of NVIDIA's Tesla card lineup, the P4 has a completely passive heatsink, designed to rely on rack-mounted server airflow to keep it cool. It was also absurdly expensive at launch, with an MSRP of just under $3,700. Compare that to the GTX 1080 with an active heatsink and the same hardware on board, which retailed for just $600. So what makes cards like this so expensive, as it's obviously not the hardware inside? If you've been following the rest of my cloud gaming series, you'll know that only a select few professional graphics accelerators from NVIDIA ever received official support for vGPU, their virtualized graphics driver for bifurcating GPU resources in a server. The Tesla P4 is one such card with official vGPU support, though it likely had a different purpose than cloud gaming or virtual desktop rendering. One hallmark feature of the GP104 GPU was the inclusion of not one, but two of NVIDIA's encode-decode cores, which NVIDIA refers to as NVENC. This makes the Tesla P4 the smallest and most efficient video encode card in the NVIDIA 1000 series lineup, offering the same H.264 encode-decode performance as the much more expensive and power-hungry Tesla P40 or Tesla P100 GPUs. Rather than rendering games, desktop environments, or genome simulations, the P4s were likely put to use in data centers as dedicated video encode cards. As the P4 is a low-power GPU, they're fairly affordable on eBay right now, fetching just below $200 on average. I picked this card up myself for the low, low price of just $500, because I bought it six months ago for a project which never wound up happening. You win some, you lose some. But such is the life of a home labber and a YouTuber. So, rather than let this $3,700 GPU sit on my shelf and collect more dust, I figured it might be interesting to take a look at its gaming performance against an unlikely foe, the NVIDIA Tesla M40. The M40 may be from a previous generation, but it was the single fastest Enterprise card in its day. It also carried a $9,000 price tag at launch in 2015. Unlike the P4, the M40 is a two-slot, full-size GPU. It features 3,072 CUDA cores and 12 gigabytes of GDDR5, along with a 250 watt TDP. That means there's nothing holding back the M40 from its top performance, as it shares the exact same GPU as the NVIDIA 980 Ti. Now, the move from Maxwell to Pascal GPUs was one of the largest leaps forward that NVIDIA has ever made. Cards like the GTX 1070 and 1080 were way ahead of their time, especially considering the lack of competition from AMD in that day. Those GPUs still hold up well today, even against the likes of the RTX 2070 and RTX 3060, at least when it comes to rasterization performance and a few less rays being traced. But is a flagship GPU core still able to perform when limited to just 75 watts? That's what we're going to find out today. 
For testing, I know most of you don't likely have a rack mount GPU server at home, so cooling a passive enterprise card is exceedingly difficult, not to mention loud. But because the P4 can only draw 75 watts at peak, it means even this 40 millimeter knock to a fan and a 35 minute 3D print are more than capable of keeping this card cool in a desktop system. Also, you're never gonna hear this thing running. If you haven't seen my most recent vGPU tutorial, I'll link it down in the video description. Just know that I'm using the same vGPU rust unlock method as it allows me to specify the memory allocation for each vGPU profile. That is incredibly important as you'll see momentarily. First up, the Tesla M40 definitely has an advantage when it comes to memory, as this was available in both a 12 and a 24 gigabyte variant. Today I'm using one of my 12 gigabyte cards and have the GPU split into two VMs with six gigabytes of video memory each. Meanwhile, the Tesla P4 presents a bit of a problem for using default vGPU profiles, even though it is a card that officially supported vGPU. See, the card was sold as having 8GB of GDDR5, but in reality it's closer to 7.6GB. The default vGPU profiles are divided into even memory amounts, like 1024 or 2048MB. That means at most you could run three 2GB profiles and have 1.6GB of memory sitting idle on the host. I'm not sure who at NVIDIA gave that the green light, but I'd be furious if I ever deployed a dozen of these into a render server, only to have my performance allocation slashed by 25%. Luckily, the vGPU Rust Unlock script allows for custom memory profiles, and I was able to configure two VMs, each with 3.5 gigabytes of video memory allocated. The test system for today is my 1U Elemental GPU server, running a pair of Intel Xeon E5 2698V3 16-core CPUs. We've also got 256 gigabytes of DDR4-2666 ECC registered memory and a pair of 800 gigabyte NVMe drives for game storage. Each virtual machine is configured with six CPU threads, 16 gigabytes of memory, and is connected to game storage via iSCSI to the local zpool. Starting with a single instance of GTA 5 running on the Tesla M40, we see decent performance, though admittedly I was pretty disappointed in the stuttering that was present. While we were able to average 48 frames per second at 1080p and very high settings, the lows definitely left something to be desired, with a 1% low of 20 and a 0.1% low of just 9. It was pretty lackluster to say the least. We also see the M40 spike to 70 degrees Celsius on the core, even with the push-pull fan configuration of the Delta 40mm blowers. Utilization on the GPU core was roughly 65%, and we see power draw of between 100 and 120 watts during gameplay. Attempting to run a second instance of the game results in being completely unplayable. The M40 does increase its utilization up to 80% on the GPU, but power draw stays near 120 watts. This isn't that uncommon in virtualized instances like this, especially in demanding titles like GTA 5 when it's set to high settings. Lowering the settings would likely result in dramatically improved performance, but I wanted to showcase a worst case scenario here. And a worst case scenario is what we got with GTA 5 at max settings, as when the two instances were running, the average FPS dropped to just 34, with lows staying roughly the same at 9 frames per second. So we managed to go from not playable with a decent average to not playable with an even worse average. But now for the interesting part of this video, do the architectural improvements of Pascal GPUs make up for the lack of high-end horsepower? In a word, yes. Running the exact same virtual machine and the exact same settings as before, we see the Tesla P4 absolutely slay GTA 5, with an average of 60 frames per second and a 0.1% low of just 23. 1% lows were also kept above 30 FPS, making the game not only playable, but overall a very smooth and predictable experience when it comes to frame times. The really intriguing part of all this comes when you start looking at the utilization of the P4 GPU. With a single instance of GTA 5 running, we see utilization hovering right around 50%, with a peak power draw of just 40 watts, and temps max at just 55 degrees Celsius. That's an absolutely insane result, considering the M40 was drawing nearly three times the power, all while failing to average 60 frames per second. Pushing our luck, I fired up a second virtual machine and a second instance of GTA 5, and impressive doesn't begin to describe it. While our average frame rate fell to 49 FPS, roughly matching the Tesla M40, the low frame rate stayed acceptable with a 1% low of 24 and a 0.1% low of just 20. 
That means the Tesla P4 was able to run two instances of GTA 5 faster than the Tesla M40 could run just one copy of the game, all while drawing 50 watts of total power. And now's the time in the video when I would normally tell you to go into the video description and follow the affiliate link to buy a Tesla P4 for yourself. But I've got one more surprise for you. You see, by default, one of the ways the Tesla P4's power is kept in check is by limiting the GPU frequency. While most Pascal cards could easily climb to 1800 MHz or higher under GPU boost, the P4 is limited to just 1113 MHz out of the box. While the firmware won't allow the GPU to climb quite that high, you can still tell the card to allow clocks up to 1531 MHz. So I did, and here's where the Tesla P4 goes from impressive to straight up unbelievable. Again, with two instances of GTA 5 running, we were able to pick up an additional 10 frames per second, with an average of 58 FPS thanks to the higher clock speeds. The lows also improved to 28 and 24 FPS respectively. GPU power draw also only climbed up to 65 watts in total, completely annihilating the value proposition of the Tesla M40 in the process. Look, we all know the jump from Maxwell to Pascal was huge, but the Tesla P4 has completely blown away my understanding about the architectural improvements that were made. At just 65 watts of total power, I was able to run two copies of GTA 5 at 60 FPS, 1080p with respectable lows. And unlike the Tesla M40, it doesn't take a metric ton of airflow to keep it cool. Again, with just this little 40 millimeter knock to a fan, you'd be able to run this card in a desktop system without worrying about temps creeping up on you. The absolute best part about all this, the Tesla P4 has crept below $200 for the first time in the last month. If you've been looking at attempting your own cloud gaming project, but want to keep your system cool, quiet, and power friendly, the Tesla P4 should be very high on your list to consider. And now, if you'd like to pick one up, just follow the eBay affiliate link down in the video description. Every purchase you make on there does earn me a couple dollars and really helps keep the lights on around here. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today was sent over by a longtime fan of the channel, John J. It is the Emperor Julius Double IPA from Treehouse Brewing, clocking in at 8.8%. As Rhett has already had this one, I don't have to share. Probably gonna dump that one out. I don't like hazies. <laughs> Come at me. <laughs> All right, Emperor Julius from Treehouse. Here we go. Boy, that is just straight up like orange and grapefruit juice. That is wonderful, very, very thick. And if you told me it was non-alcoholic, I may just believe you.